Sure, well, I'm Paul Gautreaux. I'm the brewmaster here at Big Rock Brewery. Uh, I've been the brewmaster here for uh, a little more than four years, but I've been at Big Rock for 25 years. Um, I started out as a home brewer. Big Rock started in 1985. They produced their first products, came off the line in September 85. I found that they were making the same beers as I was trying to make at home, so I, I quickly became a, a, a Big Rock fan and started to come down to the brewery, knocking on the door until they finally hired me in the, February 1986. Some of our other flagship brands are, of course, Grasshopper, which is a filtered wheat beer. Right. Uh, Gopher, which is a, it's an all malt lager. Uh, it's done purely with Saz hops, though. Okay. So we really, what I did with this one was I wasn't I was looking for the hop flavor without the bitterness. Right. So Saz, of course, you know, are a pretty important hop in the brewing business, but they also have a, a low alpha acid, so you can really lay in a lot of Saz, right. get that hoppy flavor, and you don't have the bitterness that you might get from some other fuggles or, or or something like that. So. Right. So that's our all malt um, lager, uh, and, and lime beer is another one of our uh, flagship brands. Uh, it's a it's it's lime in the, the same kind of I think we're meddling in the same field as, as Bud Lime and Bud Light Lime and those type of things. Right. But ours is quite different. Where I've had those other Miller Chill, they yeah. they you know I don't want to make this sound wrong, but they they taste more like coolers to me. You know, <laughs> they're quite limey. They don't even taste like beer at all. But this is a beer. If you have this, it's a light beer also, but it's beer. And there's a subtle hint of lime to it, which makes it yeah. makes it quite nice. And, you know, you get the lime, and it's a nice lime flavor. We tried nine different limes before we settled on this one here. Wow. As soon as we hit that one, then I knew right away I'm going, okay, this is the one. Now how much do we put in there type of thing? So it worked out quite well. Uh, Ed McNally is the founder of the brewery. Um, he, he started with uh, Otto Leverkus, who was a friend of his from Europe, and he used to visit Ed all the time and bring beers with him for Ed to try. And, and Ed's traveled the world too and understood what uh, real European, fresh European beers tasted like. The beers that we got over here at the time European were usually treated for, for export or were stale dated or stale and, and you couldn't really get any real European style beers. Then you had your American, our American cousins, those beers were usually adjunct made, that type of thing. So. Uh, with him and Otto's help, he decided to start his own brewery and search out a brewmaster, which Otto did. Um, found one Burn Peeper, who was original brewmaster, located him. Uh, Burn came out of, uh, he's German, but he worked for Lohenbrau for years, he worked for Guinness for years, and uh, probably had 35 years under his belt when he came over here to Canada and, and helped Burn start this, or helped Ed start this brewery. Uh, I started working for Burn shortly after he, he was here. and. He was my, he mentored me through everything, and um, I worked for him for probably close to 15 years. We in that original brewery, we started in a small little. Everything was in one, in one building, almost in one room. Um, as the brewery expanded, we bought the people next door. Then we bought the people on the other side. One was called Big Rock. The next one was called Bigger Rock. Then we had Big 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 Rock, and then Biggest Rock, and then we ran out of room. I think our largest leap, especially early on, was in 1988 during the Olympics. At the same time, we came out with that, our version of Exo Lager, and, and uh, sales, I think, really started to take off. And then we get a little funkier. You know, these beers, it gives me a chance to fool around with different things like licorice and vanilla and, and, and a lot of different things. These are the ones that have come out that, that I think are worth bringing to the public, that, you know, that have, that are, let's call them successful. Before we try those, though, I wanted to talk a little bit about this one here, the McNally's Reserve, which is a Guinness style stout. Um, pours, tastes much like Guinness, uh, similar in alcohol. Um, personally, I enjoy the flavor much, much more. It's got a little bit more bite to it than the Guinness. It's a little softer. It's a little, uh, the mouthfeel on this has got, we've got a little, we've got about the same amount of, of uh, nitrogen in as Guinness does, but a little bit more CO2, so it's, I think it's just a better drink, it's, it's, it's a better mouthfeel. It's got the same cascading, 4.2%. This is a pack your mouth full of flavor. Really? Uh, okay. I visited New Glarus Brewery in Wisconsin, and they do a couple of fruit beers down there, which I thought, I kind of, I liked what they do with it. How's that? <laughs> comes alive that's it yeah, <laughs> sure does mm -hmm. wow. 
that is a fruit beer. That is yeah. that is that is a fruit beer. You know, <laughs> jeez. Yeah, we didn't go light on the fruit, and I didn't want it that way. I, di I didn't want, in this one, it, opposed to the lime, where we wanted a lime first. Like th this is done more in the style of this type of beer. When you have some of the Belgian fruit beers, fruities, and that yeah. type of thing where they don't taste so much like beer anymore. They do taste like, you know, yeah. they're, they're fruit beers with alcohol in them. And so this is a 4% and, and I wanted it to have a full pack of fruit flavor. And yeah, well, it definitely doesn't. And I like what you, you were saying with the tartness right at the end. You, yes. know, you get that sweetness and then it's just... Yeah, you have that tartness at the end for yeah. sure. No, definitely. Yeah. That's wonderful. Isn't that something? Yeah, jeez. It set my expectations for fruit beers now at a different, <laughs> at a different height. Oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> so. That's good to hear.